Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with P2P.com. And I'm Josh. Uh, we're here to talk simple MDM, but don't worry, we're not going to talk about it. We brought in some experts. We did. Uh, I think Zach is here with us to yeah. kind of walk us through simple MDM, right? And, and then Eric will be filling in as the phone a friend, so if they get the really tough questions. I, I mean, I'm not saying Zach doesn't know the product, I'm saying he's just not very smart. <laughs> so the tough questions will go to Eric. I love it. How's that for jokes? <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he disappeared. Yeah, yeah, his like camera goes off. I made him quit. Uh -oh. All right. Well, while we're waiting for that to get hey, fixed. Hey, Zach, are you there? I'm here. I don't know what happened to my camera. I'm there still is. on. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, don't worry about your camera. Hey, we, don't we're, worry about we're, the camera. We're going to imagine you as an incredibly yeah, attractive individual. So it's all good. Yeah. Going to it's imagine. not much to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you can... <laughs> all right. Awesome. Are you handing it to me now? I, I don't know. Yes. I did. Yeah, we're ready. We were trying well, to. Here, this is my again. Moment. here with us awesome. is the. I always thought I'd be an Instagram influencer, but this works even better. So, well, hey guys, I'm Zach uh, here with PDQ Simple MDM, the whole shebang. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about Simple MDM. We're going to go through device enrollment today, and I'm going to show you some features. So, uh, what I always like to say is, I was a Windows sysadmin, and if I was a Windows admin who my boss said, we've got these Apple devices, we need you to manage them. I would love to have something like Simple MDM so I don't have to look at those Apple devices anymore. Sorry, Eric, that's just kind of, that's how I feel. Um, so first of all, Simple MDM is a, a cloud hosted uh, program that's accessed through a web interface. So you don't have any kind of agent you have to put on the machines or anything. We simply use the Apple MDM protocols to manage the devices. So all you have to do, connect those devices to the internet somehow and you're good to go. So we're going to start out talking about enrollment. So I've got an iPad here that we're going to take through enrollment. And right now we are at um, we are at the screen like you just turned on the device, right? So there are two types of enrollment you can do with, with any kind of device. So we manage iPads, iPhones, Apple TVs, and Mac OS devices. Uh, we're just going to talk about um, iPads today and, and it carries over to kind of the Apple TV and, and iPhone as well. So you're going to, to benefit yourself, you're going to want to have an Apple business manager account or an Apple school manager account. We're not going to deep dive into that today, but essentially that just is going to make your life a lot easier. It's a free account you can get from Apple. They can automatically add devices to it when you purchase them, makes your life significantly easier. So you don't have to enroll them manually. Once you've got that account and you've got a simple MDM trial, which we're doing a uh, hundred devices for up to six months. I heard we were going to mention that a lot. So I'm just going to keep saying it randomly. Yeah. And I'm just going to uh, throw in the, uh, the, email address simple 100 at pdq.com okay there you go beautiful beautiful so um, once you have those it's a lot easier to enroll devices so you have two types of enrollments you can do we're going to do an automated enrollment today but i do want you to see you can do what's called an enrollment by link you can create this enrollment it's you can send a qr code to your end user you can send um, that url to your end user and it will enroll the device group enrollment is um it's going to limit what you can do as far as management, right? There's some profiles that you're not going to be able to apply. Uh, you're going to be able to push apps and things like that, but you're not going to get as much control over the device. So a lot of times you'll see that used for like a BYOD device where the end user um, doesn't want full management, but the company needs some kind of management of the device. We're going to talk about automated enrollments really quickly, just to show you, I created a test enrollment here. Um, so we essentially what this lets you do is get a new device and either drop ship it to your user or just make your own setup process easier. You can go through and skip a bunch of the pains that you see at setup, which is super great because I know uh, people don't like clicking through all those different things. But if you do want them to set up something like um, um, touch ID, things like that, you can allow that or you can just skip everything like we're doing today. So with this, that means so. we can bypass the terms of service for them. They don't have to ignore it on their own. Yeah, yeah. Anything that uh, that you can allow your users to not have to ignore and you can ignore it for them is great. So yes, you can totally do that, Jordan. So once you've got an automated enrollment set up, all you have to do is turn the device on and connect it to the internet, right? So we're going to do that real quick. We might lose the device for a second, but I promise it'll come back. So I'm going to select US, which it's not, you can't see it on the screen right now, but um, we'll reconnect in a sec. So all I'm doing is selecting my region. I'm selecting set up manually and then I'm choosing my wireless network. After I punch in my wireless network, I'll reconnect the device so you guys can see it. This takes just a sec. Very exciting. Jordan, sing something while I'm doing this. Well, the, uh, something. No, do we have any questions? Well, if that's gonna take a minute, is it a good time to take a question if we've got any? 
Hang on one moment. We have one question. It's one we had in the pre-show that Brig kind of blew out of the water for us, but here we go. <laughs> what are the prerequisite of you of of using your MD solution? Madzid. Well, hopefully this answer makes him less angry. But nothing? No. So the the prerequisites um, really are own Apple devices is, is really it. Own Apple devices you want to manage. Um, everything's we kind of take care of everything for you. It's cloud hosted. We do all the maintenance. Um, like I said, it's an Apple um, business manager or school manager account is going to help you, but it's not required. I don't know why this keeps hopping. It's driving me nuts. Um, but yeah, really no prerequisites. Just have Apple devices you want to manage. Good question. So I have connected to, I'm connecting to the internet right now and we're going through the activation process, right? So my device is reaching out to Apple. Apple's telling it that there is an enrollment pending with simple MDM. The device is gonna take itself through that enrollment process. So you can see it's asking to be managed by our group is called White Room Projects in this case. I'm gonna hit next. And it's really this easy. So you can set up a some kind of pop-up at the beginning, right? This is probably the most infor- important feature we have is the ability to show Obi-Wan Kenobi at the login screen. The finale was last night. I almost cried. I hope you guys did as well. Uh, so we can go ahead and start that enrollment. And that's that's it. It's configuring the iPad now. So typically at this time, it would start applying profiles and applications to the device. I left that off of there so I can show you guys what those look like. But if you want to, at this time, you can have it start installing all the baseline apps that you guys want on the, the whatever device that you're enrolling, as well as start applying profiles. And we'll talk about profiles here in one second. Okay. I'll have you so know whole- that I, I haven't been watching Obi-Wan, but I, I'd still cried last night. <laughs> just not Obi-Wan related, just an every night thing, right? You asked. So, so you, you can have it uh, apply the applications. Can you have it where, because I see a whole bunch of just junk that comes in by default. Can you have it strip all that out so it's just nothing but what you want to be on there? Or? Yeah, you can. Um, we have profiles that allow you to prevent certain apps from being applied to the machine, even the, the default app. So you can totally do that. Like that, looks, uh, that looks cluttered. Sorry, I got to drink my got to drink my Kool Aid because that's what Apple admin strength now. <laughs> so, uh, so moving forward into the product, right? So, one of the first things I want to show you guys is just that we're getting some inventory information. So that's really good. You want to see that, so you can see that the device enrolled successfully. Um, we've got some information about it. So right now we've got some basic info: is what's the device name, um, stuff like that. Uh, you know, how, how is it enrolled? Do you have a passcode stuff? Blah, blah, blah. You can also location track the devices. So I'm going to enable location tracking, but I can never remember where that is. So I'm just going to easy way out and search it. So if I punch location, turn location services on, open up my simple MDM app to give it access. So we'll say allow, allow. Um, Apple by default doesn't let you location track devices. It's just one of their privacy things. Um, it's it's a little frustrating, but through the use of the simple MDM app, we can make that happen. So I'm going to force this device to check back in real quick. The devices are going to check in every hour. Um, so you're getting inventory all the time, right? It's it's uh, You're not waiting and hoping to see something happen. So we're going to get an inventory right now, though. We're going to force the check in, and then I'm going to refresh the screen in a second. You guys will see location. Maybe now. Maybe now. So we're uh, maybe now we're showing an iPad for this one, but this works as well on like any Correct. Mac OS device, right? Anything that's in that, I guess, Macintosh sphere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any any Apple device, so Apple TV, Mac OS device, uh, iPad or iPhone, we can manage. Okay. There, there sometimes is a misconception that it's an, that it's iOS only, but we can absolutely manage Mac devices. And I talk to to Mac users every day. Good question. So you can now see location for the device. This is my house in Indiana. Please don't show up here for support. I won't provide it. Um, You can also see locations for all of your devices. So we're just tracking a couple devices in our lab, right? So all of those awesome guys are over there in, wow, this map sucks, are over there in Utah. Um, And cool, it's not showing up now. So uh, I don't have location on for multiple devices. We're doing it live, but there I am in Indiana. Uh, you can also do a few things to the device remotely if you want, right? You you can see the apps that are installed. You can see any media that's been pushed down. So you can push down PDFs, eBooks, things like that. Um, and then you can move the device between groups um, and see the profiles applied. But if you want to, you can do things like refresh inventory. Um, apps and media are going to go out every hour as well. But if you if like the device was off when you pushed it and you want to force push it again, you can do it there. Um, you can send messages to your devices. So um, you can say things like Jordan isn't funny. 
things like that. That's if bad. you want to, just like not this Jordan, just a Jordan that you might know. It could uh, be, and then could if you be want to message Jordan. the device. This is karma, right? It's not going to work now. It's not. There it is. Jordan isn't funny. I disagree with that. I don't know why someone would say that. But, uh, I anyway, actually happens. agree with it. I'm on board with the message. <laughs> Perfect. Um, PDQ is super into self-deprecating humor, which is why I work here. Um, you can also enable loss mode. So let's say somebody takes off with the device, right? I think this is a huge, huge feature. You can set the device in loss mode, give yourself a message, bring the iPad back, um, put a phone number in, put a footnote in. Uh, this isn't the iPad you're looking for. And you can go ahead and enable loss mode. And it's going to pop up. I can't even get into the device now. So until we we unlock the device through simple MDM, I can't even get into it. Can you can you also play a sound to yeah. try to find it. Let's, let's, let's play that sound for our audience. They need to hear it. Do you want to? Oh, I yeah. try to spare people, but it's probably been your alarm at one point. It's just just miserable. Maybe. There we go. Get yourself some of that. I can't hear it. <laughs> can you hear it? Or that, luckily, we can't hear it. That did not land. Okay, good. So that means that I've been doing that in demos for six months now, and no one's ever actually heard the sound. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, cool, this guy hears things. I can hear it on my end, but it might just be because it's coming through Zoom. It's just basically dinging. It's yeah. really annoying. Yeah. It's the sound things make when you, you, you try to say they're lost. It was so uh, disabled lost very mode. faint, but I think every time was it was it? dinging, you were talking. So you, uh, you buried oh. it. I'm really good at product demos. I don't know if you guys have picked that up. Um, you can also, you know, clear passcodes. If somebody sets up a, an activation lock, you can disable it. You can wipe the device remotely if you need to, and then restart it if you need to. All these commands, as you can see, are going to happen right away as soon as you send them out. Um, I might have been testing one time with the uh, lock screen, and I might have typed in bring back the damn iPad, and then I was just like, ah, whatever, and I just typed poop in, and I forgot I did it, and it came up on a demo, and they were very less than impressed with, uh, <laughs> with my test. <laughs> Kenzie, uh, if Kenzie's listening, she's she's a big proponent of that. So um, at this point, you know, we've kind of gone through enrollment. We've gone through showing what the devices, you know, show as far as information. I want to talk to you guys about applying applications to the device, right? So you're going to want to apply apps. You're going to want to manage the devices. If you're talking about iOS or macOS, there's a couple of different ways. We're going to focus more on iOS today, but I will touch on, you know, macOS app deployment. So you can add apps to your catalog here to deploy them, right? So we have a few different ways to add apps. So you can add apps from the App Store. So this is the Apple App Store. One of the things that's really cool about using like an MDM is um, Apple Business Manager has an Apple has a program called, it used to be called VPP. It's now called Apps and Books. What they do is they allow you to pull license, and I can't show it, there's some private info in there, so I don't want to open our Apple Business Manager account up, but essentially you can pull licenses or get licenses for certain applications. Most of the time, those are free licenses, but if you have something, obviously, that costs, it'll be a paid license, but you can pull licenses in, so you can see we have licenses for these different apps here, and then you can actually install those apps on the end user's devices without them logging in with their Apple ID. So you don't have to manage a separate Apple ID for every device that your user signed in with. You can use what's called a manage Apple ID in the background to install apps, and that's going to make your life a thousand times easier. So you can see some of the apps we have here, right? Some of your common stuff. We've already added that to the catalog. We also have a shared app catalog, some apps that we manage that you can deploy um, to your Mac OS devices, kind of like the PDQ package library. And then we also have custom apps. So if you have an app that is built for your, uh, your environment that you've built internally, you can upload that there. Anything that's an IPA, PKG, DMG, you can upload there and push that out to your devices. So once you've added devices to your catalog, you can go ahead and assign those out. So you're going to create what we call app assignment groups. So app assignment groups are really just you putting apps into a group and then saying which devices they're going to. So today we're going to assign it to the group Really Handsome Guys. And I'm the only person in that group, which is super weird how you guys didn't fall in there. Um, hmm. So Really Handsome Guys is what we're going to manage today. So I've got a baseline of applications. So in your environment, this would be every device of a certain kind needs these baseline apps. So we're going to put the American Airlines app, Firefox, Chrome, and then we're actually going to push down the PDQ inventory getting started guide because I'm lazy and forgot to find anything more interesting than that. That's a cross sell. <laughs> I know. Look at that. I did start. I, I mean, I did come in. I did used to do. I mean, I do deploy an inventory demo, so I got to got a cross sell. So we'll change to always allow. Okay. So we're gonna move this device between groups. So typically, whenever you apply profiles and you apply applications, you're gonna do that by group rather than by individual device, right? You're probably managing a fleet of iPads. You don't wanna one by one add those. So I'm gonna go into my iPad here. 
I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to move that from the iPad group, or I'm sorry, from the default group into the really handsome guys group. I'm going to save that. And that's been moved over now. So those applications should start applying to that device here momentarily. Um, if they don't automatically, we can go ahead and push those. So now that we're, you can see that some profiles have already applied. <clears throat> and actually, I think I'm going to break something. So Well, that's uh, running. So it's one group per device, but you can put multiple profiles into a group is, is if I'm following on Correct. correctly. Correct. So when it comes to device groups, so right here are device groups. These are kind of anything you want them to be, right? So you can do it by MacBook. You can do it by, you know, type of device, departments, you know, whatever you want to do here. And you can sort those devices in there. Those devices can only exist in one group, obviously, because you may have collisions with profiles if you do, if you put them in multiple groups, which you can't do. Applications, now you can put devices in as many application assignment groups as you want. So that's really handy because it gives you the ability to break down down um, the, the different apps you want to sign in different places, right? So like I said, you can do a baseline and then you can add separate things on top of that if you want to, or manage your devices with completely separate applications if you need to. So as you saw while we were talking, those apps installed themselves. Everything's happening almost instantly. You're not waiting for things. You're not coming back tomorrow hoping it installed. The apps are getting installed right away. Um, so we went ahead and put those apps on the device. We also installed or uh, added some profiles at the same time, right? So we placed uh, a few different profiles on. Actually, let's go back to that. Let's do do apps real quick. So we put those apps on. We push this media down. So this PDF should be in the bookstore now. So if we go out to the bookstore, it started, not now. We should be able to go out to library. There's our inventory getting started guide. And you can flip through that if you're just like really bored later. There it is. Um, so that is uh, uh, any PDFs that you want or eBooks, you can push down to those devices. Just to really briefly touch on it for Mac OS devices, we've integrated um, an open source software called Monkey that some of you might be familiar with into the product. Uh, Monkey just allows you to more easily install apps on Mac OS devices. It also gives you a self-serve storefront that you can use for Mac OS devices. So you can use what's called the Managed Software Center. So if you wanted to create a group using Monkey, um, we're not gonna go deep into that today, but if you wanted to create a group, you can give your end users on your Mac OS devices a, um, a storefront that they can select apps from. So rather than you have to take requests every time, you can give them a list of apps that they can install themselves and they can also uninstall themselves. In any of those scenarios, right, you're using a storefront, you're, you're updating iOS devices with app assignment groups, we're gonna keep those apps up to date for you. Oh, we're gonna keep those apps up to date for you so you don't have to go through every time and push a new version out, right? We'll take care of that uh, automatically. So that's like a self-service portal almost. It is, yes. Super, super handy. Um, saves you guys a lot of tickets. Right. So I saw so I mentioned assigned oh, licenses. Uh, if let's say Jordan was fired, for some reason, and you uh, you send the deactivate to my device, does that return the licenses automatically to your list of licenses or do you have to go recover those some other way? Yeah, that should, that'll reclaim those those licenses. Um, it'll bring those back into the pool. So, and, and another nice thing, since you mentioned licenses is, when you go to your, your catalog or you assign these licenses out, you can actually see how many you have left. That way, you know, if you need to go over and pull more licenses, right? Maybe you have 50 iPads, but then you guys just expanded. You can very easily go back into Apple Business Manager. All you have to do is just add, select the number of licenses you wanna add, there's no limit. And you can go ahead and just add those to your pool and we'll sync with Apple Business Manager. So um, the, the enrollments that you're doing and the application assignments, so getting those licenses, uh, we walk you through that process inside the product, connecting it to Apple Business Manager, and then you can pull those licenses over and you can set those enrollments up. So you can see already where Apple Business Manager is going to make your life a lot easier. Good question, Jordan. Um, so here for. moving on from, from application assignment, let's talk about profiles, right? So profiles are for former Windows admins like, like Jordan and I and current admins like Josh, I like to always say it's like uh, Windows Group Policy kind of, right? So it's happening a lot faster, it's applying immediately, but it's allowing you to set policies on our device remotely. So we have a bunch of different profiles that you can create um, for your devices, things like automatically setting up a wireless network, a web content filter. Um, you can prevent your end users from setting up iCloud, logging in with an Apple ID, installing apps, a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, I recommend starting that trial and playing around, seeing the kind of profiles you can apply. Um, you can also create custom profiles outside of here if you really want to and import them. Oh, we have a custom configuration profile where we allow you to do that as well. 
But going back to the few of the profiles that we're already applying. So I have a profile here called Block Facebook. It's an app restrictions profile. I'm essentially just saying, don't let Facebook be installed on the device. So I'm going to, I may have already added it. I'm gonna re-add our iPad to this group. So we have it already. So you can see that when those apps installed, Facebook did not install with them, right? I'm gonna go back into this profile really quick and I'm gonna flip that. So we're gonna say block Facebook. We're gonna change that from do not allow to only allow. We're gonna apply that and we're gonna say one, two, three, less than three seconds. All those apps disappeared except for Facebook. So you have full control over which apps can be on the device. Facebook is still technically getting installed in the device. It's just being blocked so it can't be used. So you can really quickly pop those back and forth if you want to allow or disallow an app. Let's flip that back so we have something to work with here. So that's going to block Facebook again, right? So another thing that you can do is you can set a software update policy. So you can just say when these devices update, right? So we're saying whenever a new iOS update comes out. So it's not like PDQ where you're going to pull the update into simple MDM and push it out. Your devices are going to go get that update from Apple and then they're going to apply them, but you can tell them when to apply those updates. So I'm saying only apply updates Saturday and Sunday from midnight to 4 AM. And that's a good way to, to not disrupt your users while they're using the device. Um, a few others I just want to touch on really quick. I won't bore you guys forever with, with uh, profiles, but you can do what's called a web clip. So a web clip lets you create an icon on the device that just links to a website, right? So originally I did this with a simple MDM icon, but it was kind of confusing. So now we have Happy Skeletor. Um, so if we click Happy Skeletor, that's going to take us out to the simple MDM website. So that's a super easy way to, if you have like iPads out in the field or something like that to give your end users the ability to just say, okay, I go to this website all the time. Just give me a button I can hit to open it up. So now we have um, simplemdm.com. You can set that to any website that you want. I've also applied a web content filter to prevent me from going to ESPN because again, we've been asked to stop talking about sports so many times today, <laughs> but they can't control us, Jordan. They can't control us. <laughs> do what we want. So we're going to go to ESPN.com. That's restricted. You can't go out there, right? So as Jordan pointed out yesterday, you could technically install the ESPN app the way I have it set up, but you could also go to Facebook. Let's not think about that workaround, right? Yeah, you could. So uh, <laughs> this is a demo, Jordan. I'm not perfect. <laughs> so um, the, the last thing that you can do is let's say that you want to use an iPad as a kiosk, right? You just want it to run a single app. You don't want to, people to be able to go to all kinds of different things. I'm going to go back into my group because again, we're applying profiles at the group level. I'm going to go back into really handsome guys and I'm going to apply the kiosk profile here. So I'm going to sign that. And the device should kick into kiosk mode here in just a second. So the only thing that we're going to be able to use is, um, is Chrome. And it's, don't make a liar of me here. Let me make sure I have that configured correctly. Kiosk, got it set for Google Chrome. Did I mention we're doing it live? We test in production. No, no pressure, but you're bombing right now. Yep. Testing. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's watching. I'm sweating. All right. Well, um, okay. while you're working on that, uh, I've seen you have a couple of questions come in. Do we want to take a couple of questions? Sure. Because I think Eric is still there, so we can answer some. <laughs> yeah. Um, gentlemen, we are looking at moving from Jamf. How does this compare? Sincerely, Stevie. S Excellent. Uh, we need hey someone. Oh, yeah. So. yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit tricky because there are different subscription levels uh, in Jamf that have quite a variance in terms of features. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, like the Jamf Pro products uh, is a very, uh, you know, it's a legacy platform, very feature rich. Um, and then they have their Jamf Now offering, which is, you know, a very basic uh, form of MDM. Um, just kind of the core features like deploy some apps, um, put a passcode policy on your devices and so on. Um, I would say that our product is kind of somewhere in between that where um, it's very mature in terms of supporting uh, the entirety of the Apple MDM spec. So just about everything that Apple allows you to do with an MDM, we can do. Um, but I would say Jamf Pro has some peripheral features um, that they sell for uh, an added cost that we don't currently support. So. Ultimately, um, you know, whether or not it's the best fit uh, coming from Jamf ultimately depends on what your specific requirements are. Um, I would recommend reaching out to our team and they can kind of talk you through like, what's your, what are your use cases? Uh, what are your requirements? And we can help you figure out if it's a good fit for you or not. Hopefully that helps. 
But if we had some way that they could try it for free for 100 devices for six months. Yeah, mm. that is so weird. I know. Let's have them email simple100 at pdq.com. There you, you guys go. are marketers. <laughs> That's not, right. not real good ones, though. Everyone knows I'm a professional now. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Uh, would you like another question? Let's do it. All right. Can you wipe the iDevice remotely using simple MDM? Thanks, Try Mad Sky. Yes, you absolutely can. So, so my um, question is: exactly if you, I'm, I'm sorry, talking over everybody here. No, go ahead. Go I, ahead. So, I saw we had multiple enrollment types. So there's the initial one where we push everything out, but there's one where there's a link. So if it's like a bring your own device and it only sets up some things, if they do a wipe against that one, it's not going to remove their personal data, is it? Or is it just a full wipe no matter what? Yeah, so there's uh, a, a little bit more nu nuance to it than that. Um, so when you use enrollment by link, um, by default, so for macOS devices, you're still getting most of the MDM features. And this is a little bit of a weird, you know, just um, again, just like a nuance of the Apple uh, ecosystem. So uh, on macOS, you're going to get most of those functionalities, except for just the ability to automatically enroll a device. Um, if you wipe the device using enrollment by link, um, it's still going to wipe the device completely. Um, now there's a separate uh, method you can use for enrollment by link called user enrollment. Um, which is really specifically designed for bring your own device scenarios. So if you do have, let's say, a personal device that's being used for work purposes, um, you can use that uh, user enrollment option, which is just something that you enable uh, for the link itself. It's just a setting um, that you can switch on and off. And basically, the user will be prompted for a managed Apple ID from Apple Business Manager. Um, they can punch in that Apple ID onto their device, and that enrolls uh, the device into MDM uh, as basically a, a BYOD device. The cool thing about that is it creates a completely separate file system. Uh, so there's a managed file system and an unmanaged file system. And it actually uh, prevents any data from being, um, you know, basically any personal data from seeping over into the managed volume and vice versa. Um, and the cool thing is that, you know, if you were to unenroll that device, it would wipe out the managed volume and not touch the personal data. Um, so it's a really great solution for, you know, those common scenarios where you've got maybe like team technicians or just anyone out in the field with a, an iPhone or a personal device that, you know, they're not too keen on having uh, full management on it, but they, you know, they still want to have it as a personal device, but they also want to be able to use some work tools. Um, so it's really great if you want to, you know, provide your users with some apps, make sure they have a secure passcode, um, maybe set up some accounts like email or VPN. Uh, but then also, you know, let's say that user does leave, you can remove that that managed volume, thus removing like the VPN email account and any uh, business apps that you've installed. Um, <clears throat> so that's a great solution for BYOD. I would say for the most part, if your organization owns the devices, you're going to want to use automated enrollment. It's really the preferred uh, method for enrollment. So um, the way that process typically works is that you purchase the devices through Apple or an Apple authorized reseller. Um, and when you do that, those uh, your vendor can actually provide you with an order ID. You just punch that ID into Apple Business Manager. It imports all of those devices automatically. And then once you've connected Apple Business Manager to MDM, you can have those devices enroll. Um, if you did go out, let's just say, you know, you needed to get a device really quick. Uh, you know, you just hired some new people and turns out like some some devices were back ordered or something like that. And you just run out to Best Buy or you order something from Amazon. Um, you can still add those devices to Apple Business Manager after the fact. Um, so uh, that's for both iOS and macOS devices. If you want to add them to your ABM account um, later on, it doesn't matter how they were purchased. You just need to use this application called Apple Configurator. Um, we have some guides in our knowledge base that can walk you through the process, but um, basically, I would say if your company owns the devices, I would recommend automated enrollment. If they're personal devices, I would recommend user enrollment. I agree with everything Eric said. <laughs> you approve this message. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So awesome. Good answer, Eric. Yeah. Is, uh, is, Did are we you ready for us now, Zach? Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Pull the, the, the curtain back. <laughs> Perfect. So 
Um, I have no idea why that's not working. <laughs> after all that time, my answer is I have no idea why that's not working. Eric and I will take a look at that after. Um, but you can see that the profiles work 99% of the time. It works every time. Uh, so I'll take a look at that with Eric after this call. Um, the last few things that I just wanted to cover really quick were, you know, those are, are the main features, right? You want to be able to lock down those devices. You want to be able to apply those applications. Um, again, I really like to reinforce, you can do that at the time of enrollment. So if you set those profiles and those apps up pre prior to enrollment, those device, those will apply to that device as they get it. So it really does give you the ability to drop ship a device to an end user and just let them set it up themselves if you need to, or just make your own life easier. Um, the last couple things I just like to touch on are, Simple MDM does have a fully RESTful API. Um, it has about 90% parity with the, the product. So just about anything you can do through the web interface, you can, or I'm sorry, through the web interface, you can do uh, through the API as well. I know we love automation here. I told Jordan we should just have a bell that goes off every time someone says automate on the webcast. Uh, and then we also have role-based access, right? So you can add users and you can create whatever kind of roles you want. We're not locking you into anything. You can create different roles roles, give somebody just billing access if somebody doesn't need to actually see the product, give somebody just access to see the devices, device groups, whatever you want to do. Um, you can really fully control uh, simple MDM inside of your environment. And this is where you guys clap. Everybody clap. No, I'm just oh. kidding. That's, uh, and that's, that's kind of everything that, that I would show you guys today in kind of our, our not super deep dive demo, but that's, you know, I think it's a great product. And again, as a former Windows administrator, if I had uh, Apple devices that I needed to manage, this is what I would want. It's super easy to use. I think it's a great fit in the PDQ family because PDQ has always been a super easy product to use, super, you know, not a, a huge learning curve. And uh, and I think we've continued that trend with Simple MDM. And if you want to give it a test drive, uh, 100 devices for six months free, just email simple100 at pdq.com. And we have a boatload of questions for you guys. Are you up for it? Perfect. That's a Zach and Eric question. You guys up for it. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's dive in. Okay. Can you remove the Apple ID remotely on the device using simple MDM? Once again, try Mad Sky. Yeah. So you can, um, there isn't a way to remove an existing Apple ID. So let's say you have a device that's out in the field and already has an Apple ID and you enroll it uh, into your account. There isn't a way to remove that, uh, you know, barring wiping the device, but um, there are some ways to prevent users from setting up Apple IDs. Um, so before they've actually been added. So typically, you know, if your goal is to manage devices that without users setting up their own personal Apple IDs, this allow account modification option that Zach is showing, that'll allow you uh, to prevent users from uh, adding or changing any existing Apple IDs on the device. So. Um, that should solve your problem. Also, uh, during the setup process, as Zach demonstrated earlier, you can skip the uh, add an Apple ID step during setup assistant. So if your goal is to really just make sure that, you know, at no point a user is able to add that Apple ID to the device, you can skip that initial step and you can apply this restrictions profile with allow account modification disabled, and that should solve your problem. Um, also to add on that, so uh, if there is an Apple ID and the basically the problem is that not so much that they're using it, but there's a risk of having the device activation locked uh, through that personal Apple ID, you can remove uh, activation lock through MDM as well. So um, that can be nice. You know, if you want to give your users the options to use their own uh, Apple IDs, maybe they want to download some personal apps um, just for whatever reason, um, you can still make sure that you can recover that device, even if they do enable activation lock. And, and Eric, typically you have to reach out to Apple to get that removed if the user doesn't do it, correct? It's, a, it's kind of a headache yeah. of a process. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge headache. Um, yeah, it's a very common problem that we see where people are coming to us saying, hey, like, what do I do about this? You know, this user set up an Apple ID on their device and then, you know, they left the company and they turned it back in. We wiped the device and now I'm, I'm locked out. What do I do? Um, so basically, you know, if the device is managed in MDM, you can disable that. Uh, if it's not managed in MDM, you're going to have to make a trip to an Apple store. <laughs> so definitely, um, so, you know, saves you some time there, some time and frustration. All right. We're going to go speed round on these uh, next bunch of questions. And and for Zach and Eric, I don't, we haven't told you what the speed round is. I don't know if we can do this. We'll see. We're going to try and uh, the answer has to be within 60 seconds 
or less. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we all just laugh. We, we never make it. We never, ever make yeah. it. All right, <laughs> next question. How do I enroll an existing Mac OS device? Sincerely, Icebreaker. Yeah, so uh, there are two ways you could do it. So one would be to use enrollment by link, um, which as Zach showed you, you just create a group enrollment, uh, you send them the URL and they'll click the URL and then uh, be prompted to download the profile. Um, so that's one method. Uh, the other method is if it is an existing device and you have an Apple Business Manager account, um, there is actually an Apple Configurator app for iPhone that you can use to add a Mac OS device. Um, it will require you to wipe the device in the process um, but if it is a company-owned device that's not an ABM already, you can still add it with Apple Configurator. That was pretty darn close. That well was, done. That was good. Well done. All right, next question. Can you provide remote support using simple MDM? Try Mad Sky. Great question. Um, so we don't currently have uh, a remote screen access or screen control tool built into our product. Um, what we typically see is that users will uh, use SimpleMDM to deploy a third-party tool like Apple Remote Desktop, TeamViewer, you know, um, AnyDesk, all of those other options uh, to those devices. So uh, I guess the answer is no, but kind of. <laughs> all right, next question. Let Eric earn his money. Yeah, he's doing well. Can you run inventory reports in SimpleMDM like PDQ Inventory? So, so I would say not quite like inventory. Um, you can pull any of the data that you want out of the product using the API. So there's a ton that you can do with the API. Um, you can also export all of the data that you see, would see. You know, Normally you would have 50, 100, 1,000, whatever devices here. You can export all of the data, customize these fields. So you can pull pretty much any of the data out really easily that way. Or again, you can pretty much configure any kind of or get any kind of data you want through the API. Also, I did just want to add, I don't know the inventory tool very well, but um, we do check in with devices hourly. So we make sure that any information that's in the interface is up to date. So yes. um, it's not something where you have to manually go scan uh, to get new information from those devices. We're getting that automatically um, on an hourly basis. Well done. Okay, next question. What is the required amount of devices to be considered enterprise? Sincerely, Bill R. Yeah, so the, the enterprise plan, um, it's a little bit different than some other companies. So all of our subscriptions include the same set of features. Um, really, the difference between uh, the plans is how you're paying it and the price that you're paying. So our enterprise price plan is typically reserved for people who want a more for formal purchasing process. Um, so by default, when you sign up through uh, our website, um, you can it's a self-serve model. So you can go in, sign up for your trial at your own convenience. Um, once you're ready, you know, at the end of your trial, you just punch in a credit card and your trial account will become your production account. Um, if you don't want to pay with a credit card, that's typically where our enterprise plan comes in. And so, um, you know, that's really available for uh, pretty much anyone over roughly 50 devices. Um, if you want to pay through like a purchase order uh, or invoicing process, um, the enterprise plan is available to you. We do offer volume discounts on the enterprise plan. Um, my advice would be to uh, reach out to our team uh, and uh, just you know let us know how many devices you're talking about, and we can give you a quote if that's something you're interested in. And Kelly, uh, is there like a way that if if you were interested, you could like enroll like a hundred devices for six months just to try it out? <laughs> you know, I think we can work something out. Um, we'll, okay, let's. Josh, let's just create an email. Can we do that? How about email simple100 at pdq.com? I, th I think we could do that. Let's do that. I feel like Zach's that perfect, treading on yeah. the territory here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have four more questions in the queue. Let's do this. What about exchange email control? Lance, b -b 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 -b. Yes, uh, exchange accounts are supported. There's an email account profile that you can use to configure those. Um, I'm not sure how it compares on Windows because I am uh, in the minority here as an Apple admin, but um, <laughs> you can configure exchange accounts on devices through uh, the email account profile. Okay, next up from Dylan T. We are currently using 
what is that, Marakai MDM? Can Meraki. you Meraki. 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 I, I'm, I like Marakai better. We're going to rename it. Can you compare <laughs> this to blah, 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 MDM, Dylan T? So I'm actually going to let our community do the talking on this one. My advice would be to reach out to uh, to ask that question in the Simple MDM channel on the Mac Admin Slack. So if you go to macadmins.org and uh, sign up for that Slack group, um, I would put that question in there. And I think our users might be able to uh, answer that even better than I can. That is and, and all I can say is that I, I do a lot of demos for people with Meraki MDM that are looking at us. So. Or Marikai. <laughs> Next question. Marikai. I'm sorry, Marikai. America. <laughs> America. Has Apple <laughs> fixed the inability to force enable disk encryption without bothering the user on OS X yet? Any MDM that finally gets this right on non-ABM devices gets my nod. Thanks in advance, Nate R. Yeah, so um, the File Vault profile allows you to force users to enable encryption. Um, it still does require user interaction, um, but basically the, the profile gives you, uh, and again, this is based on Apple's MDM spec. It's not something where um, we get to choose how that interaction occurs, um, but you do have some control over the options. For example, you can um, choose when you're prompting the user, whether you're prompting them at logout uh, in addition to login. You can choose how many times uh, they can log in without um, before they're forced to enable encryption. Um, and also, uh, once encryption is enabled, you can escrow the recovery key to Simple MDM for um, retrieval if you need it uh, at some point down the road. So, uh, again, that's just kind of the Apple standard these days, um, but you are able to configure that with Simple MDM. And our final question of the day. Sorry to do this for all other MDMs, but we use Intune to manage now. Works great for Android, but lacks for iOS. Quick comparison between Intune and Simple MDM. Mike P. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of personal experience with Intune myself, um, but from what I understand, it's a little bit limited on the Apple side. Um, so we, you know, Simple MDM was developed. Uh, as an Apple first MDM and, you know, iOS especially, I would say is a, a strong point for us. And um, we tend to be a bit more feature rich than MDMs that kind of added it later on. Um, in terms of specific features, you know, I would reach out to our sales team and we can probably go through and, you know, take a look at what your use cases are, what kind of uh, features and requirements you're hoping for. And we can tell you, um, you know, how we stack up directly to Intune. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm super happy, you know, go simplemdm.com. Feel free to book a demo and we can talk about um, some of those feature differences um, and, and kind of look at your needs and, and make sure that we can meet them as well. And if you want to take it for a test drive, hey, <laughs> we, we can do that too. How about uh, 100 devices free for six months? If you're interested, just uh, email simple100 at pdq.com. Well, this was a completely new idea. Did you clear this with the uh, finance before you uh, approved it? It's better to uh, ask forgiveness than permission. Ooh, totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. There uh, you go. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I know, especially for people that have grown up in the window shop, Apple is always a problem just because it is different than what we're used to. So sure. I don't know. I, I felt like I learned a lot. I, I enjoyed learning about what Simple MDM is. Uh, hopefully it's something that interests you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jordan with PQ.com. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Lance B. and Bill R., winners of PDQ Swag. Send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. Once again, if you'd like to try Simple MDM and see if it's right for you, you can manage 100 devices six months for free. Just email simple100 at pdq.com. Thanks again, and we'll see you back here next week.